You're flying with a friend that's a pilot, like me, and he or she becomes unable to fly. What do you do now? Let's say I just faint, I die. What do you do? Okay, so you basically you go to this instructable, you check it out, you learn the four-step process for landing a plane. It's only four steps, guys. It's not going to be easy, but you're most likely going to be okay. It's happened to many people before, actually, and they they make out a, make it out alive. They call it a talk-down landing. So usually you right. use your radios and you, you talk to people. Warning, I'm not a certified flight instructor. Uh, it's not intended to joke around with. We're going to have a good time today because you guys are my awesome passengers. Uh, planes are replaceable, but you guys are not. So uh, once we get down close, I'm going to end up taking control. But uh, let's say you have this, you, you know, this actually happens to you. Uh, I want you to be able to get out alive. alive. And also a pilot saying, a good landing is one you can walk away from, but a great landing is one where you can still use the plane. So you just need a good landing. You just need to be able to get away from it, to walk away from it. Right. That's fine. Okay, step one, get ready. Aviate, navigate, communicate. That's what pilots are trained to do. That's what you're going to do. So, aviate. Learn the controls and what they do. You need to know three controls and two instruments. So, first things first, grab the grab the yoke. That's the most important control. Okay? You have complete control of the airplane now. Make sense? Make sense. Now, keep it straight and level. You don't want to be going nose up. You don't want to be going nose down. So, keep your eyes outside of the cockpit and realize, are you climbing? Are you left or right? Are you up or down? What's going on? And correct, so that way you're, you try to get straight and level. All right, looks good to me. Keep your aileron nice and neutral. If you start rolling left or right, you need to correct for it. And it's a little bit bouncy out today. But you can also kind of look out your wing and see, is it up or down or is it level? It looks about right to me. Okay, so the yoke controls a couple things. Roll us left and right. Notice how it rolls left. Keep her going, yep. And then do it right, so now you're level out again. Yep. Perfect, and don't be afraid of it. You can really give it to it. You can yank it left and right if you need to. Also, up and down. So pull in and out. So notice what it does. Up is going to pull you up. And now I want you to push forward because going up too long <laughs> is going to slow you down and you're going to stall. Okay, so you got the basic controls. Also, your rudders, I'm not going to really teach you how to use them, but just put your feet down there. And if you want to scoot forward, you can. I got the airplane, so there you go. Okay, your feet are going to control the rudders. Just keep them neutral, and you'll be fine. Basically, don't push one in more than the other. Okay. Just keep it good. Okay? So those are your basic controls. That's all you need to know. Now you need to know two instruments. One instrument right here. It's called your airspeed. Your airspeed needs to be in the green. If you're going fast, it's going to get too fast. If you're going slow, by the 40, that means you're getting ready to stall, so you need to go faster. Okay, that instrument... And then the artificial horizon. So this tells you whether you're pointed up or down or left or right. So notice that. Okay. It's perfect. You're flying straight and level for the most part. The other thing, altimeter, don't worry about it. Look at the ground. Do you feel like you're far enough off the ground? I feel like I'm far enough off the ground. Looks good. Okay, so now navigate. That's the second part to step number one of getting ready. Navigate. Figure out where you are and how high you are. You feel like you're high enough, you're probably good. Where are you? Well, you're over the city of Ames, but where's the airport? Look for the airport. Find the airport. There you go. Right over there. Airports are often the strips that uh, that are not aligned with any roads or anything. They're just kind of their own two separate strips. Um, also, navigate. Figure out, are you going up or down? Uh, are you going too fast? Kind of look at your instruments to figure that stuff out. Communicate is the next step. This one's really important because um, if you can communicate, you can talk to people, you can figure out what's going on. So for communication, do you have a? You don't have a button on yours, but you do there, and find any sort of button that's going to try to transmit on the frequency. And whatever frequency you're on, try and call out for help. That'll help you out, and then somebody can get in contact with you and coach you through that. So if you don't remember what I say here today, go and talk on the radios, and you'll be able to tell. For example push mine, and then it would work. If you're advanced in communication, you're going to want to go to an emergency radio frequency, 121.5. So try and, and manipulate the radio to get to 121.5. You think you can do it? 121.5? Yep. There you go. So now if you were to call out on that frequency, somebody would automatically know it's an emergency. So they're going to get you in contact with the right people, and everybody's always monitoring that frequency at least a little bit. Okay, awesome. 
Now, what you can say is on that frequency, mayday, mayday, or you can just talk to them. Just say, I need help. I'm here. This is what's going on. My pilot's dead. <laughs> you get the idea. That's all step one. Good job. You got it down. You're already flying the airplane. See? You can do it. You don't really need any experience or training. You just need to know what it does and what to look out for. Don't go too slow. Don't go too fast. Don't climb a lot. Don't go down a lot. Okay, next part is the approach. Find an airport and go to it. The best part is to be flying over it. So yep, you're gonna roll over towards it and the airport. Good job. So you felt like we were climbing a little bit or getting too slow or whatever and you just push the nose forward. But the airport, She's over there. She's a little hard to see. Okay. So now you want to fly over the airport. So now you can't really see the airport, but kind of figure out where it is. Keep your eyes looking for it. Yep. And I'm going to do a radio call on the right frequency so I don't freak anybody out to tell them what's going on. Hips traffic Skyhawk 51582s, two miles to the northeast flying over midfield at 3,500 aims. Okay. And just keep us going like that. So you're gonna find an airport, fly over it. The nearest airport's usually the best. You could use it a GPS, look at a map, but the best port is probably, best idea is probably gonna be try to find a city and try to find a strip that looks like an airport that's not a road. If all else fails, you can land in a field. And the next part uh, is going to be line up with the runway. Also, any airport's going to accommodate you in an emergency. If you're in the middle of Minneapolis, St. Paul, they will stop all jet traffic just to accommodate you because you're in an emergency. They're going to save lives. And also, as you fly over the airport, Try to find a windsock, which is going to be right under you, so maybe you don't want to fly right over the middle of the airport. You want to fly over to like the left or right and try to figure out which way the wind is going. Okay, look at look down there. It doesn't matter how long you take. You could spend a half an hour, an hour up here. You've got probably five hours worth of fuel. So, yep. The next part is going to be to line yourself up with the runway. So if you see the wind sock down there, I'm not sure if you can see it, but try to figure out which way the wind is. Wind's blowing okay. that way. Exactly. Okay, so you want to land into the wind if at all possible. Yep. So, line up with your runway, so you might want to take a big old loop around. Just get yourself some nice big space and then figure out how to line yourself up with the runway that's going into the wind. Okay? So take us out over, make a big old loop before you try to come down and land. Keeps traffic so make an even bigger loop if you want. the pattern of the northwest. And it's a little difficult now because you probably can't see the runways, so you got to remember kind of where they are, all right? Ames traffic, any traffic in area, please advise Ames. Ames traffic, Skyhawk 51582 is two miles to the west uh, inbound for landings on runway 13 in Ames. 
Okay, so you see the runways? Oh yeah. Okay, so just my professional opinion is you're going to be high on this, but you can still loop around. And the next step, after you kind of loop around and get lined up with the runway, you're going to want to reduce power and glide. So the, the power is down here. The black one is the throttle. Okay, so if you pull the throttle back, yep. There you go. That's how you reduce power. You can go even a little bit more if you want. There you go. Okay. And you're going to start a natural descent here. You want to keep an eye on your airspeed. You don't want it to be beyond the green, and you, you don't want it to be that way either. So, yep, perfect. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's not as easy as it. Traffic jet number 446, take a back. He's climbing through 3,000 for 5,500. We're just off your 12 o'clock there. Roger, Skyhawk 51582 is turning final for runway 13 in Ames. Okay, so the other thing is reduce power and glide. So you're going to need to reduce power quite a bit more. Yep, so pull her all the way back. And try to get yourself lined up with the runway. And you'll kind of realize, you know, where where is the runway right now? And how do you need to get down there? So... Now look at your airspeed though. Your airspeed's getting really fast. So there's not much you can do about it. So the, the, the reality is for this one, because we're, we're too high, you're going to want to just go around and make another loop because we can't descend fast enough on that slope. So you'll kind of figure out the slope after you do it a couple times, figure out what's, what's going to work and what's not going to work. Okay. So go around. Let's add a little bit of throttle though so we don't get too slow. And we always keep our airspeed in the green arc. Usually right in the middle of the green arc's about right. The other pilot saying is pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. So pitch is in and out, and power is the throttle. So if you need to gain or lose altitude, use your power. If you feel like you're too close to the ground or too high off off the ground, then you need to add or reduce power as necessary. And if you want to increase your airspeed or decrease the airspeed, don't use the throttle for that. Use yourself. Use your in and out. Yep. So you're kind of looping around here and you're going to get yourself lined up the next time. And you're a little bit lower this time, so that's actually good in this case. Doing all right back there, Will? I'm doing awesome. That's great. I'm officially addicted. Oh, boy. <laughs> you haven't landed yet. <laughs> so, yep. Good job. That moment where the plane starts to descend slightly and you yeah. get that feeling of traffic, Devon Air 5819 or Kilo, is to the east, uh, transitioning to the west at 6500 start way. So keep getting us lined up with that runway. The moment where you start getting that uh, slight feeling of weightlessness, Yeah. I need more of that. Oh boy. Oh boy, we'll try not to get you sick though. Yeah. Austin, you're doing great. <laughs> so get us lined up with the runway, center line of that runway. Straight out from the end of it. You don't want to approach it from the side. You just want to get lined up with it and then go straight into it. Make your life a lot easier. Oof. Yep. Good job. This looks like about the right approach. <laughs> Traffic Skyhawk 51582 is two mile final for runway 13 at Ames. Okay, so the next thing, reduce power and glide, okay? So notice those two white lights on the left, or four of them? That means you're high if they're all white out there, okay? So that means reduce power all the way. Let's go all the way out, there we go. And now you just glide. 
It's perfectly okay to glide. And you're going to see that those whites are going to turn from white to, to pinkish red. And as, if one's red and one's white, that's perfect. Okay? White is good. If they're both red, that's bad. Okay? Next thing is add flaps. Flaps are right here. We're going to add one notch. And then I'm going to take control here because it's a little bit pumpy, all right? <laughs> all yep. right. And if you want to take the camera, perfect. So add flaps. That's going to slow you down. And you want to make sure you're in the white arc when you add flaps for airspeed, okay? Notice that. And then down here, I add another notch. Perfect. It's looking good. Okay, and I just keep myself lined up center line. See how one's red and one's white out there? That's awesome. That means I'm perfect for glide slope. The other thing I want to be careful of is I want to make sure my airspeed's always in the green, right around 60 or 70 for, for this plane. Always in the green. You'd rather be fast and see how they're red right now. So that's bad. <laughs> so in that case, I'm just going to go around. Don't ever be afraid to just go around. If things don't look right, you're scared, just give it full throttle and make sure you've got enough airspeed to climb. And then as we go around, I can also move the flaps. That'll help me climb a little bit faster. There we go. Okay, so I'm pretty much lined up with the runway here, going right towards the end of it, which is perfect. Next step, reduce power and glide. So I bring my throttle all the way back, and I just glide. The next thing I do is add flaps. Flaps add drag, and they make your descent steeper. So see how they're white and white, the two white lights out there? That's okay. Unicom Skyhawk 64814. Ames traffic Skyhawk 51582, short final runway 13, full stop Ames. Okay, so add flaps. Now you're just going to get close. Skyhawk 64814. The next thing you're going to do, you're just going to get close and you're going to hold yourself right off the runway. See that? Perfect. There you go. And that's it.